Hi, this is Pat Cosgrove, and I'd like to welcome you to Cosgrove's Cosmos. Today I have some news. I am now moving forward on my observatory project. This has actually been in the works for over two years, and while I've had several posts on my website, I haven't done any videos on this topic at all. I'm here to correct that today, so let's get started. Let's start with some background. Since 2019, I've been doing astrophotography from my driveway. My access to the sky is not great due to the trees, and I've shared this in other posts. Here's a shot from my driveway looking down to the south. That gap between the trees is my access to the sky. Depending on how I have my trees trimmed, my access to a target is somewhere between three and four hours a night. I mapped this tree line out in Stellarium so that I could predict when a particular object would clear the trees or when it would descend again into the trees so I could plan my shooting. So this battle with the trees has been ongoing. I get so few clear nights as it is, giving up integration time because of trees is not something I'm very happy about. Next problem was setup. I run three telescopes, which means I physically have to set up three telescopes in the driveway. I have to do polar alignment, get the software all up and running, and that's just to start my evening. Here's what my driveway looks like during a typical session. And at the end of the evening, of course, all this equipment has to be taken down and put away once again. Not exactly the best way to end a night. I really wanted to have a better solution. I wanted a property with more access to the sky and reasonably dark skies. And I wanted to build an observatory, something I could automate. I wanted it so that my setup was much easier when I started the evening. I could reduce or eliminate my shutdown time. And through automation, maybe I had a chance of sleeping through the night. Sure, if something went wrong, I would want my observatory to wake me up so I could pay attention to it. But I was hoping to get a little bit more sleep. And finally, I was hoping the automation would allow me to image on some nights where the guarantee of a clear night wasn't completely there and probably wasn't worth my effort to set up three telescopes in the driveway. But an observatory, if all I'm doing is rolling a roof off, maybe it would be worthwhile. And if it was automated such that clouds came in or the weather changed, it would close down and protect those scopes, more the better. This would give me evenings that I typically would miss now. So with these thoughts in mind and my wife on board, we started doing two things. We started a search for land that would be suitable for the observatory and perhaps either have a house that would meet our needs or allow us to build a house that would meet our needs. And I started thinking about the design of the observatory itself. In this first video, I'm going to focus on the design of the observatory. There'll be another video that talks about the search for land and another one that talks about how we're starting the project up. So let's talk about the goals of the project. Right now, I set up three telescopes each night, and so an observatory would have to allow three telescopes to run simultaneously. Maybe even I could expand that to four. A roll-off roof style of observatory seemed to meet my needs best. It would expose all of the scopes, and on those rare clear nights, when the photon capture was good, I would maximize my ability to capture them with four different instruments. When I began to look at roll-off roof designs and what other people had done, the vast majority of them had one pier in them, and maybe a couple of them had two piers in them, but I didn't see anything other than a very large club observatories that had uh, massive buildings with roll-off roofs that would support multiple scopes. Then I came across an inspiration. I came across this thread on cloudy nights. This thread talked about the creation of the West Texas Observatory. It was a 15 by 15 roll-off roof observatory with four piers. And I looked at it and instantly I said, that is what I'm looking for. The main person on the thread representing the observatory was Yu Shou Shen. And I contacted him through Cloudy Nights and I asked him a few questions. Um, Yu Shou was very helpful, shared a lot of information about how they went about building the observatory and some of the details on the foundation design and otherwise was really helpful. He also shared some images with me so I could better see exactly what it was they built. Their observatory was built by Backyards Observatory and it was based on their 15 foot by 15 foot model. I contacted Backyard Observatories 
and I purchased a set of plans for this particular bill. As I looked at the plans, it seemed like there were some things that I would have to do differently. West Texas does not have a lot of snow, but we certainly get a bit of it up here in upstate New York. So the orientation of the roof looked wrong to me. I could see a situation where when snow was sitting on the roof and you tried to open the roof, it would roll right down the ramp right into the observatory. So it seemed like the roof really needed to rotate 90 degrees to make this a little bit more snow friendly. The other thing I have to worry about here is the fact that we have a lot of frost, uh, freezing temperatures, and we get a heave cycle. So the kind of foundation I might, that might be very stable in a very warm desert like West Texas is not going to work here. So I wanted to make some changes there. So I needed to make some changes on the foundation and on the roof. I also decided to go with a scissor truss in the roof because that would maximize head clearance in the observatory and the room for the telescopes to move around. I really wanted to have a situation just like they had in West Texas, which was in any orientation the telescope was in, the roof could still safely close without striking the telescopes. This significantly simplifies the control of the overall system. The final thing I wanted to do is add a little bit of area towards the north end of the observatory. I wanted a space where I could have cabinets to store things, and, a, and I wanted a countertop where I could pull optical tube assemblies, uh, drop them on, and have a place to work on them within, within the confines of the observatory. So with these ideas in hand, I contacted an architect, and we began working on a project to design basically a 16 by 20 foot roll-off roof observatory. And we started with the idea of having seven foot high walls, which would support a normal sized door for entering and exiting. Once I had the preliminary plans at hand, I had to decide if this was really going to be the right setup for me. Are the walls the right height? What height do I want to put the piers at? Uh, what sight angles will I have from each, posi each pier position as it looks over the south wall or the east or west or north walls? I had not worked that out and I wanted to test it. So one way I did that is with my wife's help, I laid out the plan in the driveway uh, with markers and some poles to look at different heights. And I actually put the telescopes where they were going to go within the confines of that design. This allowed me to get a sense of what things were looking like. So I got some key measurements from that and I ended up building a fairly complex spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, it allowed me to explore different pier heights, different wall heights, uh, different pier positions, relative distance between the wall and the pier. And with that, I could calculate what the sight angles are. How low on the horizon would I be able to image? And this, I shared this with a bunch of my astrophotography friends, and they gave me some really good feedback, which allowed me to tune this a bit further. So I made some changes to the initial plan. I dropped the wall height from seven foot down to six foot. It turns out by the time you put the track on top of that and the scissor truss, it would still clear the telescopes and I could still walk around without hitting my head. And that would give me a lower angle that I could access with the telescopes. I set the height of the pier to be similar to the height of what I was getting with the uh, Ioptron tri pairs I was currently using. But I did change the distance between the piers and the distance between the piers and the wall to get a little bit more separation between the four piers so there was less of a chance of one scope catching the other scope in its field of view. The other thing I tuned up a bit was the track design. Uh, most people who do a roll-off are using V-wheels on a V-track on both sides. And that probably works fine, especially when you have a smaller roof that you're dealing with. But I was dealing with a 16 by 20 foot roof uh, and a track that had to go double that to roll off and expose the inside of the building. Uh, and talking with my friend, Rick Albrecht, who was a very talented mechanical engineer and very knowledgeable about telescope and observatory design, he suggested it would be hard to do it that way because you'd be over constrained. It's really important to get each track so that it was uh, level and each track had to be parallel with each other. And to the degree they weren't, you could have a situation where it would bind because the tracks aren't lined up. And then once you build it, that's probably gonna be achievable. But over time, things settle, things sag, uh, wood changes its dimension as exposed to the weather. And I didn't want a situation where I would be binding the tracks. So with Rick's recommendation, I'm going with a, a set of V wheels and a V track on one side of the building. On the other side, I'm gonna use flat wheels and a flat track. That way the, the V rail will guide 
things going back and forth, while the other side is really just uh, allowing for a little bit of slop in the system while still supporting the weight of the roof. So with all this feedback, we went back to the architect and he created a final set of plans, which gave me a set of stamped diagrams that I could use when talking to builders, trying to get an idea of what it would cost to build this thing. That's been an interesting exercise in itself, because when I started this, we were in the days of COVID. Now, early on, the prices weren't too bad, but as COVID went on and supply chain issues became more, more difficult, and some materials went up in cost. Concrete cost, for example, I think is up about 5x what it was before COVID. Uh, the price of the observatory kept going up. And so that put some pressure on us to try to find land we could build this on because the more we ended up waiting, uh, the more the observatory was likely to cost us. So this is the final plan. Well, probably not final, I'm sure. Some changes will be made before we break ground. But um, let's take a look at some of the basic features. We can come over and look at the foundation plan, which is over here. I have four here foundations these are going to be independent from the slab and the surrounding foundation then i'll have some concrete pads going down below the frost line for the outriggers over here you can see the side elevation here's the main part of the building the roof and the outriggers which allow the roof to roll off and right now i have a door being accessed right there this is the south elevation Right now it's very plain, but in the new property, um, we actually see it from the back of our house. So I think we're gonna modify this design to put in some decorative doors and windows to make it look like a little cottage uh, as seen from the house. But functionally, that's pretty much what we're talking about. And then get an idea of what the uh, relationship to the piers and the walls are. This shows a concrete pier. I'm actually gonna be going with a steel pier. That is one change that's happened. These walls right now are about six foot high, and up in here you can see the scissor truss. The scissor truss gives quite a bit of room inside for walking around, even though the, wall, the walls are only six foot high. Um, by the time you add the track on top and then the scissor trusses, there's actually quite a bit of room to move around. So this is pretty much what I'm going with right now. I'm sure I'm going to be doing some more studies on this as I finalize things, but that gives you a little bit of a sense of where things are at today. So with this, I started to get some early quotes on what the build cost would be, and it really started pushing us to find land. So now I had a final plan. I needed a place to build it. My wife and I went on a two-year search trying to find the right property. We spent a lot of time looking at a lot of places, and it was difficult finding one that met all of our requirements. But finally we did, and uh, I'll soon be posting another video that talked a little bit about the search, what we were looking for, how we ended up changing what we were looking for midstream and what we ended up with. And then we'll start talking about how we're gonna get this project started. I'll be posting those videos soon. So thank you for spending some time with me today. As always, I welcome comments and questions both on this YouTube channel and on my website. So for Cosgrove's Cosmos, this is Pat Cosgrove signing off and wishing you clear skies and excellent seeing.